Hi there. I'm keeping this one short as there's not too much to say that already hasn't been said concerning the ongoing crimes against humanity in Palestine. Their victory is with the help of God, inshallah, and it's up to us outside of Palestine to educate ourselves first. That is the first step in battling the constant media barrage of utter nonsense and lies used to justify the existence of the largest concentration camp in existence, as well as the ongoing ethnic cleansing of a population indigenous to the region for generations. Next on the agenda after that is to be present at demonstrations, but that's a conversation for another time. Here are some fantastic books to start off with. Number 1. 10 Myths About Israel by Ilan Pape The best introduction book on the topic, particularly for those in the West in my opinion. The settler colonial entity spends billions on its PR image and the mythology it's built around itself. It even teaches these outright verifiable lies to their population in hopes of continuing the dying tradition that is Zionism. In a nutshell, it covers the various myths that underpin the founding of the state, which include Palestine was empty land. It wasn't. It had been continuously inhabited for thousands of years and Palestinians are a continuous admixture of the ancient populations that lived there. The majority of those now identify as Muslim Arabs, although sizable Christian and even Jewish Arabic speaking populations called the place home and still continue to call the place home. The Jews were a people without a land, a strange and anti-Semitic talking point which leans into far right, oh they have no loyalty to this country, nonsense. The reality was the vast majority of Jewish people didn't identify or even like the concept of Zionism, particularly when they had already lived in lands they called home for generations themselves, from the US to Morocco, Yemen, Central Asia, and the many parts of Europe of course. Now the fascist menace gave impotence to Zionism, ironically achieving the goals fascists wanted in the first place, that being a Europe without a Jewish population. The book delves deeper into this point. Zionism is Judaism, a fanciful fabrication that no self-respecting literate person would believe. Likewise, the silly idea of treating the supposed right given to you by a religious book to a land currently inhabited is questioned within Judaism itself. The book goes into the history of the many forms of rejections the met as it tried to win converts. Zionism is not colonialism. No, of course not, it was just a coincidence that the word colonial was ubiquitous in the speeches and institutions of Zionists. Likewise, the current actions of settlers kicking out indigenous people from their homes and taking over their land in ever-growing settlements, that's not colonialism either, is it? You'd have to be stupid, or ideologically aligned more probably, to genuinely believe their claims on this, but the book delves deeper as mentioned. The Palestinians voluntarily left in 1948. Yes, really, this is something some claim with full seriousness, although inwards they know they're full of shit. You just need to read the letters, official proclamations, and diaries of the founders of Israel to see that they were very sober in their desire to physically remove or annihilate the indigenous Palestinian population. The current actions of Israel speak even louder. The book delves deeper. Israel had no choice in the June 1967 war. This is another clear myth, one possibly less relevant to us today, but knowing the history is very important in contextualizing the settler colonial occupation's motivations. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East, of course, where the indigenous Arab population within Israel is heavily discriminated against, and an apartheid dual legal system exists where Jews have certain rights and Arabs have others, this is fully in line with what a democracy is, right? Putting aside the usual fallacies of liberal democracy narratives, this is one of those myths that you have to be ignorant, blind, or just ideologically sympathetic to the settler colonial side to believe, mixed in with many racist presuppositions, of course. The Oslo Mythologies This is in regards to the many rounds of negotiations between Israel and the PLO, discussing primarily the institution and administration of a Palestinian state by Palestinians, amongst much more. One quote is enough. So, in truth, without the application of extreme pressure, there is no reason in the world why a native population would ever volunteer to partition its homeland with a settler population, and therefore we should acknowledge that the Oslo process was not a fair and equal pursuit of peace, but a compromise agreed to by a defeated, colonized people. As a result, the Palestinians were forced to seek solutions that went against their interests and endangered their very existence. A very important chapter. The Several God Mythologies this is especially important today as it covers the usual talking points about Hamas, the self-defense argument every time Israel decides to bomb Gaza, etc, etc. The two-state solution is the only way forward. Another good quote. However, the reality of the current colonization of vast parts of the bank by Israel renders any two-state solution an improbable vision. At best, the most one can hope for is a Palestinian in Bantustan. But such a political arrangement would create a state with no proper sovereignty, divided into several cantons, with no means of protecting or sustaining itself independently of Israel. In either case, Israel will need to use brutal force to implement his vision of a solution, annexing half of the world bank, ghettoizing the other half as well as the strip, and imposing an apartheid regime of a sort on its own Palestinian citizens. Such a situation will render any discourse on the two-state solution irrelevant and obsolete.
The next book is The Hundred Years' War on Palestine by Rashid Khalidi. The book introduces the Palestinian context widely missing from any historical conversation on the topic, and one the settled colonial entity doesn't want to heard. It's told from the perspective of the author and his family, and likewise is rich in a discussion of the historical events surrounding the modern history of Palestine. Rather than bullet point facts, it's a more pleasant read for those that appreciate a narrative when discussing history. His conclusions are unnecessarily liberal, but the rest of the work is an excellent read. Number 3. The Ethnic Cleansing of Palestine by Pape. Again. What can I say, the guy has written many good books. A fantastic work that goes through the barbarity underpinning the founding of the settler colonial entity. It covers massacres, arbitrary arrests, expulsions, and concretely lays out the correct analysis, that is the ongoing ethnic cleansing of Palestine. To understand what's going on now, you really need to take a look at this book. Number 4. Strategy for the Liberation of Palestine by the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. An explicitly Marxist organization, and one of the largest in Palestine actually, which lays out the class analysis of the question and their perspectives on what strategy to take forward. It comes with a preface that discusses some of the changes that have occurred historically as a pamphlet was originally published in 1969, although much of it is still very relevant. A treasure of a book, I can't recommend it enough. And number 5, Edward Said's Orientalism. Leaving the general best for last, although not explicitly on the pamphlet in question, although Said has several books on the topic you should definitely look into, this is an absolute must read for all Orientals, ooh spooky, particularly Muslims and those in the Arab world. It's also a must read for those in the West, but of course the book is scholarly and the average person in the West may not have the necessary familiarity with Islam, the West Asia and North Africa region, and the general colonial and imperialist attitudes towards Orientals. That shouldn't stop you though, the book can be dull in parts, especially towards the beginning, but don't let that dissuade you from the sheer weight of his critique. He discusses how the Orient was orientalized, quote unquote, how Western perceptions changed over time and also how they played into modern Western policy towards the Orient. He shows how the Orient itself was a Western invention, devoid of any real significance on the ground as Western prejudices shaped Western perceptions of the Orient, and hence prevented any objective approach towards understanding the Orient, let alone communicating with it. He finishes it off with Orientalism today and its approaches, and I honestly don't think you can make any valid analysis of anything regarding the Arab world without Said's profound analysis. This is an especially important work as almost any discussion on Palestine, particularly right now, emanates from Orientalist tropes and other ridiculousness. The West really hasn't learned anything, well, at least the media hasn't. The settled colonial entity, on the other hand, gladly spews this type of water thin nonsense because they know, for example, American news sources will eat it right up. Read this book, it's important. Finally, a general resource that is highly recommended, that being decolonizedpalestine.com. This resource is the best all round resource someone just entering the sphere can venture into past the books above. The information provided between a full history of Palestine to a dedicated myth debunking section is broad and extensive, but still understandable and digestible. Highly recommended. There's so much more to recommend, and the website likewise has a reading recommendations list if you want more. There are also movies, documentaries, etc., and this article has some good options on a variety of topics. If I had to choose one, though, I'd select the Land Speaks Arabic, which is available even on YouTube via a quick search. In the end, the Palestinian people will eventually win their liberation. Between a receding American empire that will lose the ability to keep bankrolling the settler colonial entity, to domestic grievances within the nation, changing orientations in the greater region, and the rise of China, the 21st century is looking more optimistic than the previous, in my opinion. Pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the will, as Gramsci said, but the intellect is leaning fairly optimistically too, I believe. Be sure to also look into funding charity organizations that help refugees on the ground, and that includes the UNRWA, the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, Islamic Relief, the Palestinian Red Crescent Society, amongst many others. That's all for this time. If you enjoy what I do, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help. I'd like to thank my patrons, so thank you to Nitro Dubs, Kenny, Thomas Roberts, Nicholas, Owen Baker, T. Wood, Dr. Lemonman, Lumix, Charlie and Eric, Ultimate Turin, Daniel Ethel, The Generic Guy, Santiago Pereira, Rain, Xander Corvus, David Fries, Confuse M, Mariana Mastosevich, Robbie Richardson, and Masei Kudrow. Thanks for watching.